Good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of my 4x4. Uh, today, standing in front of a Jeep, and I'll call the owner of said vehicle in and get us to uh, get him to talk us through it. Fred, how are you going, mate? Yeah, good, yeah. So. Okay, good mate. Um, all right, first cab off the rank, I guess. What is it? Uh, it's a 2010 Jeep, obviously, Grand Cherokee Overland spec with a 5.7 Hemi under the bonnet. Ooh, the 5.7 Hemi. Very nice. <laughs> um, okay, no, well, without any further ado, um, I can see that there's a few mods happening to it. So let's start at the front here. Um, we'll start, we'll go through lights, winch, full bar, talk us through it. Yep, no problems at all. Okay, start with the bar. It's a unique 4x4 bar. There's not a lot of bars available for this car in Australia. Um, and I actually spotted this on Gumtree. So I couldn't let that pass up at about a third of the price of new. Oh, absolutely. So I jumped on that. Um, winch, carbon winch, 12,000 uh, pound. Went with a carbon five year warranty and it's nice and light. It's about eight kilos lighter than anything else on the market. And when it sits in the front there being an IFS, Lightweights. Okay, so when we're talking light, mate, what sort of weight are we actually talking 23 about? Twenty-three kilos. Right? Twenty-three kilos 23. all up for the winch. Yeah. That's that's really really good. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of winches that you add into the front, you, you're sort of looking upwards, thirty-five to forty kilos. That's exactly right. So I looked at that. The rumble was about thirty-one, but considering it sits there most of the time, it's just extra weight on the yep. front and no, the V8. Yeah, and we've field. got Dyneema rope on it. Yeah. Not a problem at all. Um, Okie dokie. Lights. Lights. Um, bit of a combination. Cheapy super center lights yep. on the front, uh, just a nine inch LED. Um, they cost me about a hundred bucks. Yeah, um, was going to put some good ones, but to be honest, I don't use them that often. Um, generally, when we're traveling during the day, they throw out enough light, but if they hit a roo or something, I'm not going to cry at a hundred bucks or if they fail. Yeah, no, I'll, absolutely, and that's part and parcel of what our channel's all about. Like, you've obviously gone the budget option, but they suit your purpose, yeah, um, because like you say, you don't use them all the time. Uh, they they do okay. Yep. Um, and if something does happen to go wrong with them, hundred bucks. You know, yeah. And you can get them replaced. And like you say, it's if you do have an animal strike and you, you bust one or one yep. of them just packs it in because of corrugations, hundred bucks you got them replaced. You back up and going rather than crying about it because you've just spent a thousand bucks on a set of lights that you're going to throw exactly out. My theory. And let, let's face it, some of the uh, the good quality brands give up when they hit uh, hit animals as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, light bar. Light bar, um, I went with, a, I've had this one for a little while. It's a Steady ST series. So it's a, one of their top ranges, just a single row. Um, before I had the bar on, I was planning on just putting a nudge bar on this. So it was just gonna be nice and slim to sit in the front. Uh, bar went on and used the aerial tabs on top. It just also, the quality of the light is better than these. Yeah. So it just adds as a whole package, uh, yeah. it makes it quite a decent okay. amount of light. Oh yeah, spot chain spreads in yeah, those as well. Yeah, 22 inch so. little light bar, so it's not massive being in the way, it just sits nicely on the top there. Um, and yeah, just, just makes it a good package at night, I can see, see a couple hundred metres down the road. Very nice, and I see you've got the, uh, the, 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 the number, number plate number swivel, plate so, you yeah. can, uh, so you can get that out of the way with the quick release yeah. here if you do have to winch. Yeah, that's nice, it so locks so it up so it doesn't fall down on the rope. And yeah. Very nice, and uh, yeah, how often have you used a winch in this one? Uh, this one, never been used. Never been it used. Is, it is, as it came out of the box. Uh, it's only went in, or oh, probably a couple of months ago, for the trip I just came back from last week. Um, so it was more a safety precaution than anything else. Yep. Uh, I don't doubt that eventually it'll get some use. Uh, but I try not to. Well, <laughs> it, it, it's always nice to know it's there. And truth be known, we have actually been out. You'll notice the, uh, the vehicle's probably a little bit dirtier than it normally would be for one of those shoots. And uh, I, I've got to admit, I had a little bit of a dip at, uh, at one of the water holes there that I wasn't sure about rather than walking because uh, we had someone with us with a winch and I knew I wasn't going to get wet <laughs> if I didn't make it. That's your theory. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, look, I, I, to be perfectly honest, um, I've got a winch sitting in the shed at home that I just haven't had time to put into the front of mine yet. Uh, it's going in in the next couple of weeks. Um, insurance. You know, if you do keep yourself insurance. stuck, particularly when you're out by yourself or you're with your family, you don't want to be messing around thinking, how the hell am I going to get out of this? Hook the winch up, drag yourself out, yep. job done. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I went with a good quality winch. Uh, I've had the cheap winches before. Every time you go to use a cheap one, it stops working. Um, and you basically sit there and go, well, how much is your car worth? Yeah. Is it worth 400 bucks or is it worth $900? Yeah, and, so. and again, particularly um, you've got a, a wife and kids, so you've got the family type of thing and you don't want to put yourself into that position where your winch fails, you're hopelessly stuck. 
um, and then what do you do? That's exactly right. Um, so, but anyway, um, what we'll do now is we'll move around the side and we'll have a bit of a chat about tyres and suspension. Alrighty, here we are at the side of said vehicle. Um, again, with lovely little Hemi sign. <laughs> Can I take that? eBay special. Can, 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 I, can I take that? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, no, look, while we're at the side of the vehicle, let's start with the uh, wheels and tyres. Okay, uh, factory 18 inch alloys, being an overlander, the top spec. Um, that's it, 18 inch alloys. Uh, tyres are Nitto Ridge Grapplers, so they're a hybrid, all yeah. terrain, mud terrain. They're the first set of non muddies I've had in a long time. Uh, they're a 265, 65, 18, so about 32. 32, yeah. Uh, which it's about perfect for this size and with the motor without being too much over the top. Uh, and they sit on some one inch wheel spaces because of the way the front end geometry sits. And yep. just to widen the track a little bit. Yep, no problems. And uh, suspension with it? Suspension is full set old man emu. Yep. Um, I went through all the US sites to find out. I thought they'd be running ranchos or something yep. and they're all running old man emu. Yep. So I thought, beauty, down to the local ARB. Saw my friend down there and they're heavy duty front and rear. Uh, even without the winch on, I just went to lift it up. Yep, get okay. it up as high as I can. Um, so yeah, nah, and it rides nice. They're a very, very soft vehicle, standard yep. with the factory suspension on them. Uh, so this sort of stiffens it up nicely. Yep, no problems. And what sort of elevation did you get out uh, of it? It's a two inch kit. Um, the front came up three and a half inches. Yep. The back went up two and a half. Oh, that's okay. So with the tyres, she's up about four inches over standard. Yeah, no, well that, that's, that's actually yeah. Pretty good, yeah. Pre pretty good. Um, okie dokie. So, while we're at the side as well, um, and let's start while we're here wind deflector, roof rack, and your bits and pieces up on the roof. Yep, this is really a, an eBay special. Um, the roof load of this Jeep is only 68 kilos. Yep, so I couldn't justify spending a thousand dollars on a on a pioneer rack or something. Yeah, like I'm, that. I'm, I'm hearing you. <laughs> so, it's got two Rhino Vortex bars which basically sit in line with the factory roof rails. The rack came from Gumtree, yep. uh, just a Chinese import. Um, I put that up there and it screamed its head off at 60k an hour. So back to eBay, bought the, the wind deflector, shut it up nicely now. So all it does basically is just carry little lots, bits and pieces. It's never going to carry a tyre or fuel or anything like yep. that. So, yep, but it's a good place to uh, see. You've got um, your treads up the top there, shovel on this side and awning hanging off yep, it on the yeah, other side. Two That's metre by it. three metre awning on the other side, so nice bit of shade. So yeah, no, it works well. Yep, and given the fact that we're on this side, what um, what brand awning are you running on? This? That's just the Kings. The Kings awning. Uh, it's the yep. second one that's been on there. The first one met a timely demise and a bit of rain camping one night. Yeah, I wasn't expecting. And yeah. <laughs> so instead of running a mega buck one once again budget, um, that does the job. It's, yep. it's, it's only for shelter really at the yep. end of the day. So. No, and uh, th this is what uh, this is what it's all about. It's I, I guess it's picking picking your mark stuff that you don't want to go down the budget track with because yeah. it's uh, an integral part of the car like your bull bar and suspension yeah. um, but things that you can actually go down that budget option um, that as long as it suits your purpose and, and sues you out I think that's probably the way to go yeah so um yeah no look it, it, it's a good looking rig you could could have given it a bit of a wash you know well, I thought you guys were going to do that with the, that was the deal when we came out well, well look there's a car wash just over there <laughs> we might show the folks just after we've done the walk around yeah, we'll, yeah. Uh, I'll, we'll I'll show you how to take it through a car wash yeah do that mate. yeah I'll, fo I'll follow you yeah. um no 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 I'll, I'll drive your car I'll, oh, yeah. <laughs> no worries at no. all yeah. you, heard, paper to sign. You, you heard that you heard that uh, <laughs> no problems whatsoever okay so what we'll do now with the uh, with the magic of editing we'll uh, simply go and be at the back Alrighty, and here we are at the back of the weapon. Um, Okie dokie. Now, one thing that I do notice, um, wheel carrier on one of these. Pretty tell, talk us about it, and tell us, and tell the viewers more importantly, where you got it. Okay, um, being this model Jeep, nobody in Australia makes a wheel carrier. Uh, and with the size tyres I went, it doesn't fit underneath anymore. So, I happened to be on spot on Facebook, and this bloke here called Myrak Products, in Malaga, young bloke, just doing it on his own. Um, put this out, and it's a couple of hundred bucks, so much cheaper than a custom wheel carrier. Yeah, okay, and big shout out for that one as well. That's uh, and no, they don't sponsor the station, they have absolutely nothing. We're not getting paid anything to talk about it. I just give him a big thumbs up that he's actually out there manufacturing something that can see you and help you out of a problem that you were facing with your spare. Yep, any 50 mil pitch slides into anyone's tow bar, so any vehicle. 
so it's a good good setup nice and solid shakes around but you know it holds the tire nice and easy that's how you'll do um okie dokie let's swing this away show the folks how it operates all right pull the pin on that side and it's a bit of a crossover just over here just to pull the, pull the pin out of there the whole thing Gas Mate, struts on it, so ga gas struts nice and, e nice and easy, and the yep. old work thing. Look at that one here. Yep, lovely. Stays down. It can. There's holes in there that I can put the pin through if I only want to drop it a little bit, just in, you know, just an open tailgate or whatever. But I just drop the thing right out of yep. the way. No problems at all. Okay, if you want to open it up, I'll have a look at uh, have a look inside. Okay, it's not a great deal going on in the back here. Uh, the fridge, fifty litre Waco, great unit. Um, this will all be changing relatively shortly uh, for recovery gear, full winch, full winch recovery gear in there. Uh, compressor up the front there, it's just sort of packed in to stop it moving because in this car there's not a great deal of tie downs. There's two, one there and one there. So everything moves around. Yeah. Um, my dual battery system being the Hemi under the bonnet, there's no room left. Yeah. Uh, thumper, one of the best things I've ever come up with. It's an 80 amp hour thumper. And the package I got with it has a hard wire through to the battery, so it just plugs in, charges up while I'm driving along, and it also comes with a 55 volt solar panel. So when I sit up at camp, everything comes out of the car. Um, I've got a nice little stand for that, so I set up wherever I could set up 100 meters away. The fridge comes out, thumper comes out, plug it all in, plug in the solar panel, good to go for a couple of days. Mate, excellent, excellent, and it, it's actually minimalistic. But very tidy, and again, for someone that probably uses this as a, a pretty much a daily driver. Every day. Um, okay, every day, with a family, wife, kids, it's really important that you can have it set up like this, shoot off for a quick weekend or a quick overnighter, yep. plenty of room to put all of your other gear, um, and at the end of the day, you get home in the afternoon, all comes out, I guess probably 10 minutes. Um, yeah, yeah, 10, 10, 10, 10 or 15 come out minutes. And, have to carry um, the yeah, and then you're back into carrying no weight, normal standard yep. vehicle to drive to and from work. Yep. Right, that's uh, that, that's actually really really good. Now, I notice that you've got your your, your storage under here. Is that where the spare wheel used to live? Uh, no, that used to live underneath. Um, but you used to access it, yeah. wind it down through yeah. there. That is basically it's about a two inch deep um, hole in the floor. Yeah. But what I'll be doing is taking the whole floor out, and it's about three inches deep the whole way through. So yeah. I'll actually be building a false floor to house a solar panel, portable toilet bits and pieces underneath. Uh, the fridge will be on top, single drawer on that side with the thumper in it, and the whole thing will then slide out so that I can basically don't have to reach into the car to pull the fridge out. The fridge will be here. Yep. Take it off the camp. Beautiful. Much easier fully loaded fridge. Beautiful. So, and that, that will actually give you some useful space rather than wasted space. It's, it's just a little bit too short to put the solar panel in. I did try and talking five mils and the solar panel would have fit in that fine. Um, but yeah, look, at, at the end of the day, put the false floor in and then you'll be able to put some decent tie down points. So when you put everything in there, that's it'll be the set up thing. the way you want it to yep. and it will be secure because that's one of the biggest issues um, that I see with people that's like this is the limitations on tie down points inside a vehicle yep. uh, are extremely limited. So for all of you manufacturers that happen to be looking, let's think, let's think guys, let's put some tie down points inside a standard vehicle so we can secure bits and pieces. A, it makes it safe, and B, you'll probably make some more sales at a very little expenditure. Um, anyway, look, that's a really nice, tidy vehicle. And yes, Australia, it's not even summer yet, but you notice this is doing the good old Aussie wave. Now we've had a look around the outside of the vehicle, folks. What we will do is get around and we will have a look where all the magic happens in the cockpit. All right, now we're uh, in the cockpit where the magic happens. Uh, looks fairly standard, but I guess looks can sometimes be deceiving. Um, okay, let's talk us through and we'll start up on your dash with your uh, navs. Okay, uh, fairly simple setup. Uh, it's a Samsung tablet running uh, Explorer's mapping software uh, and just a RAM mount which sits on the on the dash and just charges itself off the USB on the radio. Yep, very good. Um, okay, what other sort of mods do we have inside um, here? few bits and pieces, not a great deal. I like to sort of keep it fairly simple. Um, replace the pocket. Jeeps put pockets everywhere. Uh, there was a pocket there which you couldn't fit anything into. Uh, out of the US, bought the panel. Um, fairly simple, driving light switch. Um, volt meter, which is mainly the reason I bought it, but it does have dual USB. So I can charge that up on there, put, plug a phone in, put it up on the dashboard, 
and it gives me the amp readout when it's charging up as well but it also means the main thing was so i can keep an eye on the battery i have had a car cook a battery on a trip before and being the single battery um it just gives me a yeah, nice warning i was going to say that that that's not a good thing um okay and comms i see you've got the yep remote head uh it's a midland cbs unit once again a budget one um it cost me 200 dollars brand new once again ebay um basically it's very very basic um volume channel press and talk yep. um there's no use going for technical stuff because i'd never use it um but it does have one of the things going for it is probably the clearest speaker microphone i've ever had yeah i've I'd... had unit in i've had the gmes i've had everything else and for a budget unit that is brilliant yeah uh, the unit itself is tucked up under the little panel behind the glove box just zip tied in place yep. doesn't move um so it's all nice and neat um i would have preferred to put it a bit higher but in this model the key for the ignition is on this side ah not sure why well but it is actually that that's that's <laughs> really odd because now i i never mentioned i never noticed it but now that you mention it it um yeah wow yeah, i'd keys on this side every other model in this mo in this model is on here the overlanders put it there yeah so. that that it takes some getting used to yeah, it does a bit, yeah. So it's a funny key, but yeah. So it's basically just that, the comms, and just the the uh, wireless thermometer for the fridge so I can keep an eye on what's going on. If yeah. that dies, I know, because that's, you know, the bad thing. No no problems, and no, uh, your, uh, your transfer case is all switches and buttons. Uh, yeah, auto. Auto, yeah, it's just, just a T-bar. You just put it into neutral, lift that up. That's like high, low range. Yeah. Lift it up again, back into, low, into two-wheel drive. Uh, factory effectively locking diffs, front and rear um five speed auto so yeah no no real driver input i just sit in here hang on to that and press press that yeah and then let all the magic happen does it all or, itself do, does it all itself does it all itself takes the idiot factor out of it which is good yeah well, ab absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> the less i have to do being the idiot is, is so much better <laughs> oh, it's kind of uh, <laughs> i might get one if it takes the idiot factor out it, it does, jingos. You know, yeah you just got to watch how you drive it you can't punch it as such because you'll break things with the amount of power the motor's yeah. got so you just let it work itself out and yeah. you can feel it slip and driving and then eventually it'll just it'll just pull through yeah so. and uh, i tell you what it's actually it's a really really nice looking vehicle inside really nice and uh, now what year model again did you say this was 2010 2010 it's the last of this model before they brought out the new ones she's nine shape. years nine years old it's nine. in really yeah. tidy condition the other reason i bought it i bought it 12 months ago it had fifty four thousand k's on it from new yeah so it's only got seventy eight thousand now so not bad for a 10 year old car yeah oh absolutely but um yeah no it's just just super tidy and super clean yeah it is very very well looked after so far until i got it <laughs> <laughs> now it's got mud in it yeah so, oh, cause, dreadful but at least you're using it what they're built for that's exactly right that's yeah. the idea nice comfy leather seats they are heated and they're electric yes yes we, we actually just had a little bit of a conversation <laughs> about that and um okay look very very good what we'll do now is we'll like uh, we'll grab a couple of chairs we'll sit out the front we'll have a drink and uh, we'll go through and we'll just have a talk about a few other things fine. no worries um okie dokie so here's the best part i get to sit down and have a beer while we have a chat <laughs> now earlier on in the piece you were alluding to uh this being an overland edition and uh, you'd just come back from a decent sized trip Tell us about your trip. Yeah, about a week or so ago, I did uh, Great Southern. Uh, the missus and I took off for a week. Um, right down Doncaster National Park, ended up at Windy Harbour for a few days and um, wandered through Walpole and Denmark and towing a little uh, box trailer we've got with all our gear in it. So, yeah, no, it was a really nice little getaway. Yep, and uh, obviously it goes well. Uh, what sort of fuel economy were you, were you returning? Um, about the same as i run around town uh, it doesn't really change much it's running at about 17 just over 17 litres to the 100 k's well that that's not bad for a big heavy rig with a 5.7 in it no that's what i think yeah yeah, yeah i mean you, you get a lot of the gu's gq's you know 79s like they're all using 16 17 litres you know, yeah well, that's what i'll take it. and that was towing a trailer um yeah. it's much better than loading it up with things on the roof on the roof it you might as well drill a hole in the fuel tank it goes it guzzles so yeah. so i went to a trailer doesn't even know it's there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, okay, doke. Well, again, what we'll do is we'll have a little bit of a chit chat about it. A um, few questions without notice. There's no right or wrongs. Um, so, first cab off the rank. What did you have before this? Um, I directly replaced this. I had a FJ Cruiser. 
FJ Cruiser. Yeah. And I've had several. <laughs> Just ask my wife. <laughs> Okay, I take it the FJ Cruiser was in good condition when you traded it, or when you sold it? Um, yeah, I bought it stock, spent money on it, sold it for basically what it would have been worth stock. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah bar work, left the whole kitten caboodle on that, yep. yeah. No problems, okay, so there was the, the, the transfer over, it wasn't a, uh, I have to sell it because I've done something horrible to it. Um, so, the question really is, why the Jeep? Um... I get that asked a lot. Um, for what you pay for the vehicle, you get a lot of vehicle. Um, I wanted a V8 when I got out of the FJ. I wanted something with more power. Um, sadly, lacking in power. Well, that, that, those that's understandable. Anyone that's had an FJ will understand yeah, you want more power. Want more power. Um, I wanted the V8. I wanted something comfortable. Um, 100 series V8s and things are well out of the price range. Um, the only other car available is a Range Rover, yep. no, um, or factory fitted 5.7 Hemi. Um, spotted this one, and with super low Ks, um, couldn't pass it up with full leather and all the doodads in it. Um, and it's just been a beautiful, comfortable vehicle. And it's not so big that I can still take it to the shops and park it. Yeah, no, and, and that, that that's good. So uh, I guess... It wasn't uh, a changeover because you specifically wanted a Jeep. You were just looking for something that this ticked all of the boxes. Plenty of power, um, nice and comfortable, not horrendous as far as price is concerned, like you're looking at the 100s, 150s, 200 series. Um, any consideration given to a Nissan? Uh, mm, yes and no. Um, I would have looked at probably a 4.8. Yeah. But like the hundred series in the price range I was looking at, they're all two, three hundred thousand Ks on them. So yeah. you know, and they get flogged. Yeah, yeah, no, and and can appreciate that. And that's what I'm more, I guess, more for the viewers than anything else is the explanation that you could pick this up with under sixty thousand Ks on it for less than you could pick up a uh, hundred series or a G. GU, um, with 200, 250,000 kilometres yeah, exactly on it. Right. Um, so there's that, that price factor, and that that really dictates a lot to a majority of people, or a majority of us average Joes, what vehicle you can buy. You know, like a lot of people will sit back and go, oh, I would like X vehicle. Um, but when you look at it, you need 100 grand plus. Yeah. Um, and we don't all happen to have 100 grand plus to go out and buy a base model vehicle and then start hanging accessories off it. Um, not a problem at all. Now, the big trip that you did with it, um, given the fact that was last weekend? Got back last weekend. Yeah, yeah. got back last weekend. Um, given the fact that we've had some wonderful weather and then it did turn quite cool of a night time, I guess some of the uh, luxurious extras in there went really, really well and helped you convince your wife to come out with you and do the whole camping aspect as far as uh, the, the seat heaters and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> it definitely helps, <laughs> uh, Nicole Mornings. Um, she, I'm fairly lucky she loves camping. Um, oh, you've got one of the good ones. You've I've got, got one of the good ones who, who will sit there and go, we've got to go camping, I've had enough. Not not chuck me on a plane and go overseas. Um, it's chuck the trailer on, we'll go bush. And we mean bush, bush, not caravan park. We go out in the bush where there is... No power, no water, no nothing. We go no, self-sufficient. I was going to say that's brilliant because, uh, again, a majority of people trying to convince the uh, the partners into coming out camping, out in the bush, getting down, getting dirty, going for a few days on end, sometimes weeks, um, <laughs> without a shower um, can be a little bit tricky. But uh, you seem to have a keeper. Uh, and I guess that's uh, the reason with the trailer so you can carry all of the bits and pieces. So. Yeah, ex extra bits and pieces. Fuel, obviously, because it's not a fuel miser. Uh, water, swags, things like that. Just so we can set up a nice comfortable camp for a day or two. Um, we're sort of in the middle of swapping our setups. We've changed a few, we've swagged it, we've tented it. The last trip we had an awning tent on the side of a car. Um, we'll change that again because that will basically lock the car in place. So we yeah. couldn't go off and explore. So the next stage of the evolution will probably end up being an off-road camper as far as like a Jayco pop-up yeah. off-roader where we can set up a base camp somewhere and keep the car and, and go off and then come back and we can still cook meals and, and do all that whatever time of the day we, we get back. Yeah, no, and that, that again, that's uh, actually quite a good idea for those of you that are spoiled and have a car that can tow a trailer because 
mine's not really built for it. Um, but okay, we've run through, we've shown everybody the mods that you've got in it. Are there any mods that you've put in it that not necessarily regretted but found they don't necessarily meet your demands and that you're going to replace shortly um probably only two at the moment one will be the um the tablet with the tracking with the mapping software yep. uh that will probably it stopped working apparently i'm still at home um tried resetting nothing yep. so that will probably be reset with a re replaced with a hema yeah just something very bit smaller um, and the only other thing I'll probably replace is the aerial, which is the little glass mount up on the windscreen there. Didn't have a bar when I put the two-way in. Um, so what I will end up doing is getting a bracket once again from the US to mount it on the on the back and put a broomstick aerial off the off the back tail guard. Okie dokie. So um, we've had a bit of a chat about a couple of the mods that you've made and you're going to replace for one reason or another. Um, are there any... Well, you, obviously there are because you made mention of the back, um, but other than the way that you're going to kit the back out, which we've already discussed, are there any other mods that you're actually looking at doing that, uh, on the drawing board and coming soon? Um, probably not at the moment. Um, if there was one, it would be probably a snorkel. Um, once again, not. I've got one choice and I don't like it, so I would probably go to a fabricator and get a custom 4-inch stainless one put on it yeah. with the air box the whole lot because this air box has a, uh, a drinking straw which comes faces downwards just under the grill here so it kind of kills your um water crossing ability yeah quite, but that quite would probably loop. be about it but considering it's pretty much a tourer um it's not really on the drawing board at yet but yeah. who knows what happens in the next 12 months or so yeah no absolutely but um yeah no jeeps are renowned for their uh, air intakes being low and downward pointing um, <laughs> or low with a, an upward pointing cup um, and, and I guess at, at the end of the day um, like you say it is a tourist so you're not really looking at bashing through a lot of uh, a lot of deep water no. but there still comes a time when you're faced with that particularly if you're overlanding um, where you do need to cross a bit of a river and it's nice to know that you can do it with the snorkel and the other part about it is it just helps you suck some clean air in the Australian outback um, dust is a killer, uh, yeah, particularly right. if you're in a convoy of vehicles, and uh, that, that snorkel just makes them breathe just that little bit easier. Well, that's exactly right. I had a point when I was away uh, down Don Castro, we'd came across the Gardner River, and it was a crossing, um, and it might have gone, it was, a, it was at 800 mil, yeah. so it puts it up around here, which be right on its limits, but because we're solo, we end up going, nah, it's just day two of our trip, because yeah. we're nah, turn around, backtrack another half an hour, back up the corrugated road and then headed off somewhere else just purely because it was a rocky crossing but it wouldn't have been a problem but just purely the depth if she'd sucked the gut full of water it would have been a dead dry, dead winch pull out yeah. and it's just 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 wasn't worth it for the start of the trip so. yeah and and i guess that at the end of the day is our, our ethos as well on this channel here if you see something that you don't have to do if it's borderline or it can create a major drama go around um, and, and yet yes it put an extra half an hour or 40 minutes onto your journey but rather that than um you know a fifteen thousand dollar rebuild exactly built right. and uh, the end of your holiday on day two uh, all, all for the one of, all for the one of trying to cross a river look i think you can be uh, really proud of it it's for a 10 year old vehicle i have to say i've seen a lot that's probably the cleanest and neatest rig i've ever seen for a 10 year old vehicle um, you've done yourself proud. It goes really, really well. Love the sound of it. Um, <laughs> and I'd really like you to park it over at my place for a couple of hours, and then you could have the mighty power of the 3.8 litre under the bonnet. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later off camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, thank you very much for your time. No thank you for coming out today. Thank you. Uh, it's a rig you can be proud of. And, um, yeah, look, it's just it's a really neat rig and underrated absolutely underrated very, very capable so. off-road um, yes there are a few limitations with it IFS um, so it, you don't have the luxury of the solid axle so you're lifting wheels and so forth and so on it's a little bit heavy but with the upsides with the power and and all of the extra bits and pieces that you've got with it the you know the traction control devices and, and that sort of stuff it goes pretty much anywhere where most other vehicles go um, and gets you there in comfort very much so, so well done thank you thank you Okay, folks, 
we'll see you again next time. Alright guys, well that was another episode of My 4x4. Thank you for watching. Um, if you want to see your 4x4 on My 4x4, drop a comment below or contact us by our Facebook page and we'll do a walk around of your rig. Alright, see ya.